the, the child of the, the emperor over someone who's sicker and can't exploit the position. Um, as the power that, that you can explain power differential and you have to take care of what's called singers, which is sex workers, um, and, you know, marginalized people who can't ignore them. Just amazing stuff. And the kids want to hear about Western ethics. Yeah. You know, we don't need to. Yeah. yeah. So, what language are you reading? I have no idea. I actually last year, I can't read Vietnamese, so I had here a Vietnamese psychologist who was a research assistant last year who went through, actually what I wanted her to do was read widely and find the best stuff. And this is by far the best. So she translated on key passages to me and was filtering and writing this up on both Vietnamese and English writing. Actually, if you'd be interested, I think Auckland came in that was about to fall down. We used to have a question about it. As a historian, it might be interesting. Do you know much about Confucius? I don't. So I don't either. I have a reputation of names. Other than an undergraduate part on the So we don't know if anyone's written this, you know, in Vietnamese or elsewhere on the There's a couple of very obscure papers in this background. He's got a very funny name. He, he, he took on the name Lazy Guy. Uh, I put him on hold, but the bottom one is Lazy Guy. Uh, and he wasn't Lazy Guy. Any cool artists? No. No. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't read him directly, but no. I don't think he's also going to read him either. But yeah. Uh, then, uh, he knows. Yeah. Certainly he knows that he's right, right, right.
But I can tell you, I've worked with Avrar for a very long time. He coordinated partners and helps work in Pareje, which is a very large district, um, neighbors Burundi, and has had from time to time an influx of people fleeing uh, the violence and the situation in Burundi, which is near and dear to Avrar's heart because he is a Burundi as well as a Rwanda. Um, but what Everard really, I think, fell in love with, uh, and I saw that happening, is the notion of public sector accompaniment. He was far and away uh, with his compatriot, Alice, uh, you know, the best accompanitors for the government of Rwanda uh, at the district level, and did that work for a long time before uh, becoming, uh, overseeing the clinical work at stage writ large. Um, also, he got very involved in the care of newborn babies and mothers and newborn babies and, you know, really was a tireless advocate for raising the standard of care for newborns. And as many of you know, that has been a hugely neglected area in global health. Um, and when Everard first started doing work on this in Korea, hey, we had no NICU and, and neonatal intensive care unit. Then we had a tiny neonatal intensive care unit that often had 17 or 18 babies in it uh, with about four beds, and now has a very large, very capable, excellent uh, NICU. But more importantly than that, Everard has worked on expanding good neonatal maternity care throughout Rwanda as part of a large multi-year grant, Saving Lives at Birth, and I was just happy to visit two weeks ago uh, in a district that PIH hadn't otherwise uh, been involved with, Ruli District, where we're seeing really dramatic declines in neonatal mortality and even maternal mortality based on some of Edward's work. But that's not all. Today he's going to be talking about cancer. Um, and as many of you know, I'm super happy to see Lydia. We have uh, really the only significant cancer treatment um, in Rwanda in the Butaro uh, Hospital. It's part of the national system. Chris Brown has been a big supporter and others. Um, and again, it's really about raising the standard of care, and Everard has been working very closely with people, and we have seen people from five different countries, uh, including one of our patients from Sierra Leone, who was cured by the team, several, many people we know from Burundi, from Uganda, Tanzania, um, and Congo. So it's really amazing uh, the work that's being done there, and we still have a long way to go. And so just last, I want to say that uh, Last week was the 40th anniversary of the famous Alma-Ata conference. Uh, there were several of us there. Everard was not there, but he was there with us in spirit. And sadly, uh, very few people are talking about real aspirations for care for all. And I think what Everard is going to be talking about today in his incredibly intellectual and incredibly also spiritual way is really raising the standard of care for everybody. So, Everard. everyone. Um, it, it's such an honor to be back here. Uh, I spent uh, about two years uh, here um, doing the master's in Global Health. Then I went back to Rwanda. So it's such an honor to be back here and uh, have you, you know, share my experience uh, with the cancer program. Um, but I just maybe before starting the presentation, I just want to say it's in addition to that, that's a presentation, it's also um, something that, that is in, on my heart because my mom was diagnosed with cancer um, at Bucharo Center. And um, thank God she's okay, she's very free, um, she's totally recovered. And uh, just want to say thank you to everybody. I know. Uh, most of you are also involved in this initiative. Um, so it'd be just to share my experience, but just want also to um, say that it's, a, it's also a personal experience. Um, so I just, Butaro, Butaro Cancer Center um, started back in 2012. Um, and as most of you know, Back in 90s, 
you know, same with HIV, uh, treating HIV um, for poor resource taking. You know, people are saying it's not possible, it's very expensive, it's complicated, we need very specialized people to treat HIV. So cancer today is almost the same. You know, people are saying it's too complicated to treat cancer in a very remote area in Africa. It's too expensive. It's not you know, sustainable. Um, so the same, you know, story also <coughs> applies to cancer, but um, many thanks to PIH and other people who are uh, pushing and saying it's possible, uh, and everyone deserves a good quality of care. For HIV, for NCD, for mental health, for cancer, and for you know, other diseases. For Ebola, um, yeah. So, The government um, and PIH uh, back in 2012 <coughs> said, you know, let's move just beyond HIV, let's move beyond malaria, infectious disease, but also tackle cancer care. And we don't want only those who can afford, but everyone uh, to uh, have access to cancer care. So that's where the idea uh, came. Um, so, so far, from 2012, Utaro Cancer Care has been able to treat about 7,500 patients uh, total up to now, from 2012 to 2015. So about um, 1,000 patients uh, a year, and it's, it's increasing. You know, the more people are aware, uh, <coughs> Treatment is available in Rwanda. Uh, we have more, more, more patients from Rwanda and outside Rwanda. Um, so, just you know, the global context about cancer. Uh, you know, now that um, most of the uh, cases are seen in developing countries, but we have an increasing number of patients with cancer in developed countries and low-income countries um, because of many factors. Um, you know, cost detection, screening, diagnosis is still a challenge. Um, but also, you know, uh, vaccine or uh, HP vaccine, for example, for cervical cancer not yet available, so we are seeing an increasing number of cancer in low-income countries. <coughs> um, so in Rwanda, yet we don't have a cancer logistic yet. Uh, so these are some of the data um, estimation from WHO. Uh, for men, and room and uh, but also for female cancer, we still have a liver, prostate for men, <coughs> and cervical cancer and breast cancer uh, as the major, uh, the most frequent cancer in Rwanda. Um, of course, this is Rwanda, but in the region, but also uh, of you know globally, I think the, the picture is not different from this. <coughs> um, also, one of the big steps uh, that uh, the government, in partnership with other uh, institutions, aims is about universal you know, immunization for cervical cancer in Rwanda, in partnership with MERC. So this, this is very, very important, uh, and um, so far, the government was able to <coughs> give um, HPV vaccine to about 95% of the target population, I mean, uh, the girls at school. So this is a, 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 a you know, symbol of partnership of government, uh, public-private partnership. Uh, and we really, <coughs> 
think this could really uh, help to increase the incidence uh, of uh, cervical cancer. Uh, but also the, to serve as an example, uh, you know, other countries will say, you know, it's possible, it's possible to um, make available this, uh, this vaccine. So, you know, that was the big picture, the global picture. Um, so, I want to just now to talk about specifically about the Butaro Cancer Center of Excellence. Um, so, PIH uh, was invited um, in Rwanda in 2005 um, to tackle HIV and TB. And this was really a successful partnership. Uh, but then in 2012, that's where we said, you know, let's go beyond just infectious disease and tackle um, cancer. So today we have um, uh, Utaro Cancer Care providing um, basic imaging pathology. We have a very good pathology lab. Um, it's growing, even though it has some challenges. Uh, we provide uh, surgery, um, chemotherapy, and even though there is no radiotherapy unit uh, in Butaro, we're able to um, partner with the uh, um, Nairobi Hospital to send and refer to transfer patients who need uh, radiotherapy. So, um, from 2012, uh, we had a partner with many institutions uh, in this noble mission of you know, cancer care. Um, so, these are the main ones, you know, Brigham and Women's Hospital, Dana Faber, um, Dartmouth, Harvard Medical School, and University of Pennsylvania. They have been very, very supportive uh, of this cancer program in Butaro, you know, providing support in pathology, um, you know, sending um, nurses, oncologists to provide, you know, hands-on capacity building training on ground, but also provide uh, ongoing support, uh, you know, from remotely, but also be able to travel to Rwanda, to work with the team in Rwanda. Yeah, so um, as I was saying, today, Mutaro uh, Cancer Care of Excellence is able to provide basic imaging, uh, pathology um, services, um, screening, consultation, outpatient and inpatient, um, chemotherapy, but also send patients who need, send to Nairobi patients who need radiotherapy. So our patients um, comes from everywhere. You know, of course, the majority uh, in Rwanda and in Burera district where the hospital is located. But we, we also have patients from neighboring countries. Uh, these patients um, came from Sierra Leone. And thank you, Joya, for you know, making that connection. Uh, so the, the child had a, um, uh, a hot kidney lymphoma, and it was he recovered totally uh, uh, in Butaro. So we work together with PIH, and PIH Rwanda, and PIH Sierra Leone to bring, to bring him in Rwanda uh, in Butaro. So it is. And he uh, has radiation in Kenya, right? Yes. The globalist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Global cancer care. Yeah. So I was saying most of the patients, of course. Um, from uh, Borela district, uh, but we have 
you know, they, they also come from other districts in Rwanda. Um, so, what are some of the type of cancer treated in um, at Utaro Cancer Care? We have, um, of course, breast cancer, cervical cancer, ALL, and H uh, Hodgkin lymphoma. Those are, I would say, the main ones. Uh, but as you can see, we have, you know, quite a large um, number of cancers uh, we receive in Utaro. So you can see this is you know, the trend and the volume of patients received from 2012 to uh, <coughs> 2017. So it's you know, increasing <coughs> over time. Um, this is mainly because of the awareness um, in Rwanda and globally. Uh, I had my mom. My mom, as I mentioned, was diagnosed with cancer. She had that. Uh, uh, in Butaro, it's with cancer, and she came to visit me when I was in Rwanda, and you know we went there. Uh, they did biopsy. She had the thyroid, um, so the goiter, and then they did biopsy, and they found she has a um, thyroid cancer, and she was treated there. Um, so um, you know. We had to improve over time, both in terms of infrastructure, staffing, you know, equipment, systems. Uh, you know, the one of the expansion, the big expansion we made was to build the infusion center. So people who just need chemotherapy um, doesn't need to just stay for many time, just come for one day. Um, we had a very you know, building a separate building for infusion center. Some, you know, patients just show up, um, have chemotherapy, and then go back home. So we, so this is uh, the, the infusion center has about 20, 27 beds. Uh, we are also building uh, a hostel for relatives. So because Utaro Center is located uh, in, you know, up in the north, and you can imagine people traveling from south going to Utaro, the place to stay. So we had to build um, a place for relatives where people can just stay with their relatives. Um, so we try to be comprehensive as much as, as much comprehensive as we can um, to have the comprehensive care. Um, we we started with no oncologists, with no oncologists back in 2012. So today we have two full oncologists. We just hired a new one. We have a, a pediatric oncologist and uh, an adult oncologist. So, uh, but at that time we had only nurses, um, technicians, uh, general practitioners. But also, at <coughs> time, um, doctors from US uh, come to support the team. So now we are happy that uh, you know the team has <coughs> grown, and we have uh, two full oncologists. These are local oncologists. Uh, one of his Indian, uh, but you know he's, he's very happy to to work with the team and uh, you know support. Um, so, you know, in the in the philosophy of providing not only cancer, but think about social determinants of health, we are very aware that most of the patients are very poor, so medication are not enough. Uh, so we had to to have also um, a program called Right to Healthcare to support patients for other. Um, needs, you know, housing, school fees for their kids, uh, help them for, um, you know, some microfinance, you know, I mean, to generate income. So uh, the, the right to health care program 
uh, is meant to support patients, you know, moving from patients to producers. Uh, and we think it's also uh, a good it's part of the cancer program. Uh, we shouldn't only separate and just provide medication. So, um, as you know, radiotherapy is very important, very important, very key uh, for cancer treatment. Um, unfortunately, we don't have radiotherapy units in Rwanda. Um, there's one that is being installed um, at the military hospital, but we had to send patients to Uganda first back in 2014, and then now we send patients to Nairobi. Uh, so we had uh, to partner with uh, some donors to you know, support the cost. Uh, so, so far, we've been able to send about um, 400, uh, 400, uh, about 500 patients to Nairobi. Um, and, you know, I, I visited the, the Nairobi hospital uh, and visited the patients two weeks ago. It's so, it shows us what is also possible. Not in, when we think about Butaro, we think it's great, it's something big. But when we travel to Nairobi and see, you know, the, the quality of care, the, you know, the, the level of infrastructure, the system, so we think, yes, we have a lot to do, mm -hmm. but it's in, in, inspiring <coughs> us uh, even to, to, do, to do more. So um, the radiotherapy cost so far is about four thousand uh, dollar per patient, um, but we are not. Yes, we are very conscious about the cost, but we are uh, more inspired about the outcome uh, when we send these patients to Nairobi, and uh, uh, we are now very happy that we have a we we'll have a unit in Rwanda, so the cost will go down uh, for sure. So that's the, the right to health care program I, I talked about to tackle some of the social determinants of health. Um, so pathology lab is um, also a key component of the cancer um, care in Butaro. And with partnership with the uh, um, American Society of Clinical Pathology and the Minister of Health, we were able to um, set up a pathology lab. Now we have two full pathologists on the ground. Um, they can do not only basic but more advanced um, you know, pathology services in, in Rwanda, um, in, uh, in uh, chemistry. Uh, but also do telepathology with either Danafaba or Dartmouth uh, to be able to exchange experience and um, collaborate together. So we, we are very we are very grateful um, about this partnership with American Society of Clinical Pathology. So research um, again very important um, and thanks to. Bethany and also the, the whole team who are supporting this. Uh, uh, the team on the ground has been able to, uh, you know, do some research just to improve the quality of care. Nothing about clinical trial, but mainly uh, to um, research directly. I mean, could in, impact and inform the work they are doing. Uh, I'll share maybe some of the um, publications that were done uh, in Butaro. Um, mental health, again, a very important component. Um, we, about 60% of the patients, were, <coughs> patients with cancer were also diagnosed with depression. 
So, you know, we, we are very cautious about that. Uh, and part of the program, we also uh, integrated a mental health program um, to not only, you know, tackle the mental health issue in general, but specifically for patients with cancer. Uh, so we have um, psychiatrists on ground in Butaro and also <coughs> being trained to support uh, patients with cancer. Um, electron medical records, uh, again, we start slow, but now the whole um, cancer is equipped with uh, uh, electronic medical records. Um, and you know, both lab, inpatient, outpatient, billing, uh, we have that system um, to not only document what they're doing, but also uh, you know, able to um, use that technology um, to document and uh, improve the work they're doing. So, um, yes, this is um, Butaro Cancer Center. We, we, we start small and we are very conscious about, you know, we need, we still have a long way to go. Uh, the, uh, I tried to summarize, but uh, um, we know we still have challenges in terms of staffing, you know, equipment, the number of patients uh, is increasing, you know, the more people are aware of the, this center, uh, we are receiving more people from Congo, we are receiving more people from Uganda, we are receiving more people from Rwanda, and you know, this requires more staff, more you know, drugs, um, chemotherapy drugs, uh, procurement of, uh, of chemotherapy drugs is also another issue. We don't have um, experienced suppliers, vendors who could, uh, I mean, reliable vendors who could provide those chemotherapy drugs. So we had to work with uh, Boston um, to work with uh, some international vendors. Uh, so it is what it is with you know, some consequences, cost, uh, <coughs> delay to ship those uh, chemotherapy drugs. Lab reagent for pathology lab, um, but uh, you know we we are very inspired by the work. Uh, we are so inspired by the outcome. Um, I'll share some of the um, some of the outcome. Uh, you know the survival rates for patients who have been treated in Taro, um, but you know. It's, it's so inspiring to do this work. It shows at least it's possible. Even though we can save one, two, three patients, we know it's, it's, a, noble, it's a noble mission. Uh, myself, before I was, um, I was more interested with newborn care, <laughs> maternal child, but uh, since my mom was visited <laughs> uh, in Butaro, I say, you know, no matter what, whatever it takes, We'll do that. We'll do that. Um, but then, beyond just having a center, we know it's very important to create a system across Rwanda. Um, so we are working with the government to see how we could create a network of hospitals um, for cancer care, but also follow up for patients. <coughs> Who are being treated there. So, if we receive patients, <coughs> we treat them. They don't need to always come back to Butaro. Uh, we are thinking about creating some follow-up clinics, either in Kigali or other cities, so we can create sort of a network in the system. Um, so that that's our vision. That's how we are uh, we're working with uh, you know the government and uh, other partners. So, you know, we're trying to do some uh, analysis about our strengths and some of the opportunities and challenges. Um, but again, as I mentioned, we are more uh, interested about the opportunities and 
uh, you know, what we can achieve. Again, this, you know, Butaro, I mean, cancer today is, you know, the same as HIV back in 1990, where people are saying, you know, it's not possible to treat HIV. It's, it's very expensive. But, you know, now we have universal um, care treatment. IOVs are available for free. Uh, so we are very cautious it's also possible for cancer. Um, just want to um, highlight some of the, you know, um, impact uh, for patients. So, for um, Wilms tumor, Wilms tumor is one of the most frequent um, cancer for, for children. And um, so far, we have been reached about uh, 100 patients from 2012, and about 50% of children are disease-free. So this is so encouraging for us and inspiring. I know, you know when you compare to the U.S., way, way, um, you know, more than that, but uh, we think it's also inspiring for us to continue to do work. Um, breast cancer, um, I would maybe give references so people can read them out about this publication. Uh, I won't maybe spend more time on that. Um, so just the survival rate for breast cancer. Uh, CML, 90% of patients are still alive, 75% uh, hematologic remission, very important. Yeah, so these are some of the pictures, and my mom is <laughs> Yeah, so um, I, I know in the room we have people have been involved in this program, um, so I want also, you know, this to be interactive and, um, you know, I'll be happy to hear when people have been uh, traveling to Butaro provide, you know, support and or help in a way or another. So thank you so much for um, your attention, but also thank you so much for supporting this, this initiative. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. My name is um, Subdiba. I am in the Masai program in Global Health. So before now, I was in the region of Global Health and I was saying that I was involved in the Masai post boy so the Hutchins Symphony. So on behalf of Monday and his family,
like um, in Sierra Leone, we are kind of um, concerned about relapse. So I know we are supporting Monday, we are supporting his full faith. Now he's hopeful, his family is like very hopeful of him. But then um, in, in case that it relapse, um, what are the initial steps? What are, what are we supposed to be doing for him? You know, we have scheduled him three monthly um, um, checkups. We do um, his lab work every three months and see how, how, how he does. But we don't have any kind of protocol to kind of follow and see, you know, what, you know, the necessary steps to do. Yeah. So in case you have any um, any follow up protocol, I would, I would like to have and share with the team in case that. Um, yeah, so far, follow up, you know, Rwanda is a small country. Um, follow up has been a challenge, but in general, we don't have any issues with follow up following uh, patients. When you give them appointments, they will respect that. They will respect that. And, you know, keep in touch with our social program. They, you know, they are always in contact with them. Um, the, the issue is not really to go back to Rwanda, but rather when people are treated in, in, in Butaro and they feel, you know, they will, they will improve. You know, they will, Come healthy, they'll go back to school or they do their work. They say, you know, I don't need to go back to to Butaro. Now I'm I'm okay. Uh, you know, the, but uh, in general, we, we don't have issues with uh, you know follow up. Uh, what we want to do is to work with community health workers. In Rwanda, uh, we have a good network, a good program of community health workers. So we want to be able to work with them so that they can you know, uh, reach them in their community. Uh, and every time when we send a patient, we also inform the community health workers or the nearest health center or hospital so that you know, they can also uh, you know, follow that patient, not only for cancer, but anything that, that may happen. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. I'll, I know in other countries it's a, it's a big pro, it's a big problem. In Rwanda we don't have really that because it's a, it's a small you can reach uh, wherever you want you can call them uh, you know from maybe south to north you will take maybe three hours so for bigger countries it might be a, a problem but uh, in Rwanda uh, because it's well structured. Um, we don't have really that, that, that issue. The issue is mainly, you know, those patients who say, you know, I'm just okay, I don't need to go back. Uh, yeah. But also, you know, when we think about follow-up, follow-up shouldn't always happen in Butaro. When we think about how could we create other clinics, uh, and people can be transferred for follow-up in, you know, in, in the nearest thing. So create three or four follow-up clinics in Kigali, uh, it's a big city, but also in the east uh, where we have um, um, you know, a very dense area in terms of population. Yeah, so, um, and again, you know, the electronic medical records um, very important for follow-up uh, to track back, kind of be proactive and you know as call patients using these electronic medical records. Yeah. You so kind of in line with a little bit of what you're talking there about systems for follow-up and also just systems for cancer care in general. I mean, about 10 million people live, live in Rwanda, or maybe a little more. And so do you ultimately see getting to a point where there, there's a need for these services in, in every district hospital, or do you think it can, can always be something more, more centralized than that? Um, maybe I, I didn't mention that. Um, so when we started this program, we also worked with uh, the Ministry of Health to train general practitioners, nurses at the district hospital level. So diagnosis is, and screening is conducted at the district hospital level and teaching hospital. So Utaro received people 
and patients who already have a diagnosis, or maybe they suspect, uh, but it's mainly for treatment uh, and uh, you know advanced treatment. But the uh, say the primary work is is done at the district hospital level. Yeah. So and then we have three, uh, four teaching hostels. They are also providing uh, some of the, the cancer services. Yeah, they have pathology now. And two hospitals provide chemotherapy. Yeah, so we want to create that kind of network. So Butaro, maybe we started this, but we have also other facilities who are providing uh, cancer care. Right, um, congratulations, this is a wonderful, Wonderful work. I think everybody recognizes that. It's a wonderful presentation. Thank you. Um, a question? Uh, a question I have to ask. Um, so cancer care at its core for curative is usually advanced multidisciplinarily, chemotherapy, radiation, and surgical. Um, I saw you had a slide for radiation therapy and therapy on chemotherapy, but you didn't tell us a lot about what the institution is thinking about how to approach the surgical aspects of care. Did you had a few few points in there of selective surgery. Um, curious if you could fill us in on what the Tower Cancer Center, Center is thinking about delivering uh, surgical care as a component of multidisciplinary care. Yeah, yeah. surgery is also an important uh, part. We, uh, since uh, last year, didn't have any surgeon at the Butaro, uh, but we knew it, it's an important component. Um, so we had to either transfer patients who need surgery, particularly for breast cancer, to Kigali, where we, we have a uh, surgeon. But um, recently we have a permanent surgeon on site, and we, we're also planning to uh, hire an additional surgeon so we can at least do some surg surgery um, related to cancer. Um, in uh, at Butaro, uh, but so far, patients who need, you know, more advanced um, interventions, surgery, surgical intervention, we transfer them to to Kigali. Um, and again, we are very conscious it's a it's a very important component, uh, and uh, uh, we are now working with the Minister of Health to have like a rotation program for surgeons. So we don't need, if you could have permanent surgeons uh, in, yeah, in Rutaro, that would be great. But we want uh, to optimize those resources, few resources we have. The surgeons in Kigali could go to Butaro, spend maybe a couple weeks, uh, month in Butaro, and go back to Kigali. Yeah. Have you, have you noticed any increase in awareness of in general cancer in the community once this program started in the I mean I mean in the people not in the health providers but in general in the community and how has that mm -hmm. how did that help to reach more patients or was that a challenge? Yeah, um, you know, as I mentioned, you know, the volume of patients is increasing over time. Uh, of course, there are a lot of platform forums to talk about cancer, um, meetings, conferences in Kigali, um, some um, education sessions uh, conducted by community health workers, but also, you know, experience of patients. So, yes, there is. Um, Increasing awareness uh, of you know, cancer in Rwanda, but it's, I think it's not only in Rwanda but globally. Um, so yes, most of the patients, uh, of course, they are from that area, uh, Butaro area. You know, of course, they know, they, they've heard there's a center there, uh, but also. Um, 
we, we are now having an increasing number of patients from Uganda because Utaro is neighboring with uh, Uganda. So a patient from Uganda also coming in uh, mainly because of the, the health system in Uganda is maybe not as strong as the one in Rwanda. Yeah, but there's definitely this, that uh, awareness uh, in, in the community. Can I give you a quick follow up? Thank you. Sorry. So, thank you for your presentation and for your work. I just had a quick question. Can you tell us a little bit about palliative and end of life care, Sorrow? Sorry? About palliative and end of life care. Oh, yeah. Uh, palliative care, uh, it's, it's, it's a big. It's a big component, but uh, uh, we, so, so we, we are doing some palliative care, very big, uh, and same patients home, but uh, we, you know, we want to find a work with our community as well. See how we can centralize palliative care in district hospital. So, because you know, the more we keep patients uh, in Butaro, uh, you know, space is, a, is an issue. But uh, we, we started a palliative care, very basic. Um, I'm, I'm glad uh, one of our um, our staff um, very passionate about introducing palliative care. Uh, in Butaro, but also create um, a network of um, palliative care centers in Rwanda. Yeah, but we know it's, it's, very, it's very important. Yeah. My question, um, thank you for your presentation. I've learned a lot for your very brief work that, you, that we are in Rwanda. And I'm Christopher, I'm working in Haiti. Mm -hmm. I'm the head of the Vidua and Defense at University Hospital in Miambale. One problem that we face all the time is the flow of patients that we have is so high because we are the only hospital in the country that that provides surgery, surgery for cervical cancer, surgery for ovarian cancer, and surgery for 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 other cases, for the cancer cases. I'm wondering that it should be probably the same in one day in terms of of a flow of patients. And that's great some some things that we call that suffering from this patient because a lot of them sometimes die because they don't have they don't have time to get the surgery because you have a, a waiting list which is so high. Mm -hmm. And I would like to know in terms of taking managing this situation in Wanda, mm -hmm. how do you deal with that in in a practical manner? Because maybe we can use from your experience to yeah. address all. Yeah, problems. yeah, that's that that that's very um, it's very important. So in Butaro District Hospital, in addition to cancer, they have to do you know other other services to provide other you know care just <clears throat> because it's a district hospital. So um, one of the big issues is also space. How to of course provide cancer care, but also continue to do you know, the routine work, you know, infectious disease, uh, maternal. Uh, so we have some criteria and try to discharge some patients to be able to have some space. But we are also um, planning to build a separate cancer building for inpatient uh, adults and pediatrics. Uh, you know, the program will start very soon. Uh, that's one. But also, from since some teaching hospitals started to provide some chemotherapy uh, services in Kigali, we hope that you know over time we will see an increasing number of patients in Butaro because other centers are, are providing that um, that type of care. Yeah. So, yeah. The other question I was, uh, thank you. The other question is, 
and I see you provide care for yourself. Who can say? <laughs> and then, and if you provide, for example, chemo, south radiation, or you provide, for example, you can provide chemo and surgery. But I, I'm wondering your program of surgery is a little bit not so developed, and also you don't have radiation. These patients should send them elsewhere. I would. I'm wondering how do you handle that. This is the first one. The second one is according to the nutrition program, link also to cancer program, cancer care program. How do you do you handle the nutritional aspect with cancer care? And, and yeah, um, a big number of patients we sent to, to Nairobi, uh, most of them, say maybe 60%, they need concurrent radio chemo. Uh, and you know, we can provide chemotherapy in Butaro, but we, are, we can't do radiotherapy. So we send them to Butaro, uh, I mean, to Nairobi, um, where <coughs> they can do both. Uh, so they they are also able to do brachytherapy. Uh, I mean, brachy and radiotherapy at the same time. And it's, you know, the results are very promising. So the the new units of radiotherapy in Kigali, they won't have brachytherapy. It will be only yeah. radiotherapy. Um, so we may continue to send patients to Nairobi because of the brachytherapy uh, and send some patients to Kigali for just radiotherapy. Yeah. I <laughs> That's, it's just a comment. Mm -hmm. you, you can, oh, you don't get so? <laughs> no, that was, it was a discussion, but you can, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to have a comment um, about um, your strategy for overflowing of patients. So you said that you, you plan to have new building and so Expand, expand. The yeah, but mm -hmm. having the new building is something, but have, having the healthcare professionals work in that building, it's something else, so how do you explain this? Yeah, um, this, this work is not only PIH. Uh, so yes, PIH has you know, started this initiative, but uh, I have really to acknowledge the support we have from the Minister of Health. Uh, recently, uh, more than 80% more than 80% of the staff are paid by the government. More than 80%. So it's a, a private-public partnership? Public-private partnership. Okay. Recently, they, um, they appoint uh, the oncologist, the adult oncologist I mentioned, is, who are very happy so, uh, to see the government own some of the, you know, the components, it's, it's very encouraging. So, uh, and they, they also have some um, plans. They have sent people to, to do oncology fellowship in Tanzania uh, in, in India. So now we have about three uh, oncology, oncologist fellow, random. So, Hopefully, when they will be back, they will be continue. Which hospital is it? I don't know. I don't know exactly. The, yeah. My point was not actually the paying, but I mean, if you you can have many buildings, but if you still have a few professionals, you will have people shared in all over the building, so it will be like it. it won't mm -hmm. be, I mean, the problem won't, won't change anyway because you you will still have this kind of overflow. Mm -hmm. So you have this professional who is working in this, in this, in this. So yeah, uh, I think mm -hmm. the increase of healthcare professionals is also important. Uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned, we are very concerned about the challenges. You know, uh, staffing is one issue. Uh, stay, you know, the, the operational cost. Mm -hmm. But we are, uh, we know that's what should discourage us, but rather we are focusing on um, you know, the patient out outcome, uh, and we know they deserve 
what they deserve. They deserve good quality of care. And, and most of the time, I, I remember um, when we started this program back in 2012. In Rwanda, even ourselves, we couldn't really be, uh, are we going really to be able to sustain this? Yes, we, we received like a big support from donors. It was at the beginning, you know, people were very, you know, excited about the project uh, and provide uh, money. But we were not sure about sustainability. But, you know, sustainability when, when you can save one, two, three um, hundred patients, that's more than sustainability, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so, but also the the enthusiasm that and excitement that this has generated from partners, from government, from local leaders. You know, I talked about expansion of the program. Yeah. The district decides to give us a land to expand and you know have more building. Mm -hmm. It, you know. It shows it's possible, and yeah. you know people um, join this uh, initiative. So again, it's P it's not only PIH. You know, okay. PIH of course we started this, but there are a lot of key stakeholders, governments, local leaders, community members, um, yeah, of course partners, academic institutions. Uh, Soon we will have, uh, I didn't talk about that, but the University of Global Health will be uh, located in Butaro. So we hope this also could you know, bring more support. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Everard. It was a wonderful presentation, and it's great to see you back. Um, what do you think are the barriers of bringing radiotherapy to Butaro? Sounds like like an amazing opportunity. What do you think are the barriers? Yeah, it's you know we uh, that that will be our next uh, challenge, and we want to do that. But mainly costs, mainly costs. Um, there are of course regulations around uh, radiotherapy, uh, but it's mainly costs and. Uh, um, we, we are very glad that we have a unit in Kigali. We want to be able to optimize this unit because in, in Kigali, um, now that we have a platform for screening, for uh, treatment for chemo, we can easily use that and send patients to Kigali. Um, there was a debate where they should send their the therapy in Butaro, um, but they ended up to I mean, install the unit in uh, in Kigali, mainly because uh, Kigali is centrally located, is located almost in the middle, so everyone can travel easily to Kigali. Um, but we are very conscious in this expansion plan, in the master plan we have. There's a, a, a space for radiotherapy and more advanced imaging, you know, CT scan, MRI. MRI. Um, yeah. We, we, we recently received um, a big support from a U.S. company to design, uh, to do a design for that extension. So we are very excited for that. They will work with the local, local engineers, architects. To, to build this. And this is a local initiative. You know, the expansion, it, it will be a real joint partnership with uh, the Minister of Health and the local leaders and, of course, PIH. Yeah. Hi, I just had a question. Thank you for the great presentation. Uh, I know you uh, addressed this before uh, in terms of the last week. But so we're writing a paper on uh, surgical uh, aspect of the cancer management. And actually, we saw that four out of five people with cancer will need uh, surgical care. And less than 5% uh, of people in LMICs receive a safe, timely, and affordable uh, surgical cancer care. 
And so there's a great uh, unmet need, obviously. So surgical care is like important in the entire spectrum of cancer management. So in your hospital, <coughs> how, how does it look like you mentioned uh, that uh, surgical care is seen as something more advanced, but actually, according to the Lancet Commission on Global Surgery, you've seen it's very cost effective. So I just wanted to see how does it look at your hospitals and what are your uh, plans for the future, because there is a great uh, unmet need. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yes, surgery, um, I would say, is one of the less advanced components in Butano. Um, only have one surgeon, and he's a, he's a general surgeon, um, and he's doing some breast cancer surgery. Um, you know, we hope we will be able to gain partner with MOH, the Minister of Health. Um, you know, I talked about the retention. Uh, for surgeons located in <laughs> yeah, so we, we we really hope that we could partner with uh, some teaching hospital in Italy. That's where there's a big concentration of surgeons, um, so that they can travel to Utaro and. Mm -hmm. Do you know, some surgery in, in Bhutan. It is very challenging yeah. to have, you know, some of these surgeons are, yeah, you know, they are very in the country. So moving them to Bhutan, mm -hmm. not an easy. Uh, but you know, the idea is uh, they can be part full time in Kigali and travel and. Part time uh, with the Cancer Center. Yeah. And, and, but, but also, you know, I talked about task sharing, task shifting. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the surgeries can be performed by um, general surgeon or general practitioners. It's also possible. Um, and we are, we are also very conscious. We, we won't be able to have like a comprehensive team, a very specialized team in Butaro. You know, it is what it is. Uh, but and and again, that's not that's not the objective overall. We want to support the system. We want to build the system, a national system. Uh, if we could have, you know, more centers in Kigali and other district hospitals to do that, that's good. That's in the end, we are serving London population. Mm -hmm. I just have a follow-up question to that. Um, so I do think it's really interesting to think about, you know, surgical care. You talk a lot about the surgeon, surgeons that would be available, um, and I think we've seen through the data that a lot of these patients are referred to specialists in Kigali, which I think is the appropriate mm -hmm. um, use of those ex that expertise. But for the surgeries that are happening in Bataro, I imagine, and Lydia might have some information for breast cancer specifically, that you've seen an increase in the number of surgeries. So it's not just about having the surgeons there to do it, but it's also about the space, right? Mm -hmm. um, the infrastructure mm -hmm. to do the pathology, the infrastructure to do then the surgeries that need to be done, to do the follow-up. Mm -hmm. So as you build the you know, infusion for the cancer part of it, are we also building operating rooms for the surgical part of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so, so far with the expansion plan, we will focus mainly on inpatient for cancer. So, um, pediatric and uh, uh, adult, the operating theater and um, admission for, you know, post operative will remain in, in the old building. Um, so the plan will be, first of all, to start with the inpatient, and you know, in the plan, so far we have two operating rooms, you know, in place with some standards, and they are not fully optimized, they are not fully used, actually. If we could have three, four surgeons uh, with the two operating rooms, I think 
infrastructure for surgery, I don't think it's the most important, like the priority and something urgent now, and staffing is, uh, I think, the most important thing. Because with the two operating rooms, I think we can do, we can do uh, more than we do now. I know that staffing includes also uh, sufficient and competent enough anesthesia providers mm -hmm. to provide mm -hmm. high level mm -hmm. of care mm -hmm. and pre op and post op nursing care, intra op nursing care. So it's not just the surgeon tool, yeah. it's the, we, we, the ecosystem. The surgeon we, we have is always complaining they need the full anesthetic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, the more we bring you know, new staff, maybe when we we'll bring anesthetic, they will again. <laughs> Ask more, but it, 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 it's normal. It, 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 it's normal. Uh, we are we 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 are very conscious about that. Um, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you have concern about only two operating rooms, as you said. Do you take care of emergency surgery and only for cancer or emergency surgery as well? Yeah, both. Yeah. Oh. Because I wonder we need to have C section. Yeah, that, yeah, that's happening um, at the district hospital, yes. Uh, it's not happening yes. in the district hospital. Yeah, actually most of the surgery is made in the cesarean section. Okay. Yeah. In, in the future, I would like to, to, to see your vision, I don't know. In terms of planning for <laughs> upcoming 25 years, upcoming 20 please, years. Please join. Um, join <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yes, well, let's go. Right. Thank you so much. For this. this is excellent. Thank you. Yeah. 
And actually, it's, it's not as hard as you would think because immediately all the patients you can get out of the radiation, I didn't have it. I didn't have it. So this is the old cell